Hi, I'm Dr. Monica Jacob. I'm MD and aesthetic physician. And I'm Dr. Jacob Thomas. I'm MD medicine and DNB medicine. And through the last one and a half years, I've been seeing COVID patients. Okay, so today uh, uh, we are talking about black fungus. So what is this black fungus? And we never heard about this fungus last epidemic, like last year. And why we are seeing this now? So fungus infection is something which occurs very rarely in human beings. And it actually occurs when the body goes into a very immunocompromised state. So even before in the pre-COVID era, when somebody had a very long-term uncontrolled diabetes or some illnesses like cancer or they are on some immunosuppressant drugs and that is going on for a long time, they used to get this opportunistic infection, which is this fungal infection. And typically among them, mucormycosis is something which occurs in chronic uncontrolled diabetes, especially in the sinuses, which is present in our face and sometimes uh, in the lungs also. Okay, so uh, we are not hearing about these cases abroad and why are we having so many cases in India? So one of the primary reasons why unfortunately we are getting this in India is because of the overuse of steroids. So unfortunately here there are many places where we hear of steroids being used in a very high dose, something like 500 milligram, etc. per day. Whereas the trial, the original trial for COVID patients, which was done in England, they had used only 6 milligram of dexamethasone and that too only for 10 days. Unfortunately, uh, it's a bit unregulated here and we are using very high doses of steroids in, in many places. And also, while when you give steroids, the blood sugar tends to go very high. And uh, if you do not take due care to control the blood sugar, maybe you have to give insulin on a short term basis. So a combination of steroid use and very high blood sugars is what is making our, our people very prone to this fungal infection, mucormycosis. And abroad in Europe and USA, in in a much regulated environment, probably they have not been using steroids uh, in a high dose and there is uh, probably a much better control of blood sugars and that is why the incidence which we see here is much more than what you see abroad. Okay, so primarily we know COVID affects lungs and how is this affecting eyes and causing blindness? So one thing we've got to understand that COVID per se will not cause mucormycosis. Okay, the COVID per se will not cause mucormycosis. If that were the case, we would have got cases from all over the world. It is COVID with very high dose sugar, very high dose steroids with uncontrolled blood sugars, which is causing the mucormycosis. Now this mucormycosis affects the sinuses, which is empty spaces in our skull. So there are uh, different groups of sinuses, frontal sinuses in the forehead, maxillary sinuses, uh, you know, on both sides of the nose. And mucormycosis may affect the maxillary sinuses, which is very close to the orbit. And this fungus can invade the tissue. It actually, you know, decays the body tissue and it invades the tissues. So it can invade and right go through into the eye and it affects the eye. That's how the eye is affected and the base of the skull is very close to the sinuses, what is called the base of the skull. So it invades the base of the skull also and it affects the optic nerves and the optic chiasma, the chiasma, the meeting point of both the optic nerves and that's how it causes vision defects and eye defects and if it further enters into the brain, it can cause something like a meningitis or a meningoencephalitis it can block the veins and arteries of the brain also causing venous thrombosis and all that can uh, cause the patient to have different type of neurological symptoms as well as unconsciousness and coma and if of course not treated aggressively might result in mortality also. Okay, so what is the treatment for all? So the treatment of fungal infection mucormycosis is not very easy. Medical management involves an antifungal agent which is called amphotericin which has to be given intravenously 
and there is another form, a uh, specialized form of amphotericin which is called liposomal amphotericin where you have a targeted delivery of amphotericin in the affected tissues. So you have a high concentration of amphotericin in those tissues and that is why uh, you know it causes the fungus uh, load to go down. Now this amphotericin like many other antifungals it's not very safe. It has got a whole range of side effects. Uh, hepatotoxicity, that's liver toxicity, uh, some bad effects on the kidney, some bad effects on the blood. And moreover, because, uh, you know, pre-COVID era, it was not a very easily available drug because the demand was not very high. And now suddenly the demand has gone high and therefore amphotericin has become in short supply. And also you have to give a very prolonged dose of this amphotericin. And the other treatment is surgical treatment. That is, you have to go into the sinuses and literally scrape off all the tissues which are affected uh, by this fungus. And a combination of medical surgical therapy is what is to be done in this. But of course, it's not a very easy task and it carries a very high rate of morbidity and mortality. Okay, so how can we prevent this? So prevention of uh, the fungal infection requires that steroids have to be used judiciously. Now commonly we see unfortunately that there are many patients getting steroids at home. Now actually there is no place for steroid therapy at home in a COVID patient because steroids are to be used when we find that the COVID is worsening. When the patient starts requiring oxygen, you know around that time is what you have to start steroids that is when you feel that the covid is worsening the pneumonia in the lung is worsening that's when you start steroids and if you feel that the covid is worsening it is better that that patient has to be in the hospital now with a very judicious use of recommended doses of steroids you have to monitor the blood sugar with a glucometer or such other methods and you have to give appropriate therapy in the form of insulin if required and get the sugars as close to normal as possible. A combination of judicious use of steroids and a, com and a very good blood sugar control will practically cause zero cases of mucormycosis because as we said, COVID per se does not cause mucormycosis. It is the uncontrolled blood sugars and the very high dose steroids and to some extent the other drug, tocilizumab, etc., which causes lower immunity, that is responsible. But as we have seen in interiors, tocilizumab is not even available. So you can't really blame tocilizumab for that. It's a good drug to be used in COVID. Steroid is also a good drug to be used in COVID, but it has all to be used very judiciously. Okay, another question which is unrelated to this is now the new variant is, <clears throat> itself is affecting the younger individuals and which we were not seeing earlier. Why is so? So, uh, there are various uh, reasons postulated for this. One, of course, is that the, the new variant has propensity to affect the young people and therefore it is affecting the young people. And this is something which, has, which we have seen in the second pandemic wave all over the world. In the first pandemic wave, the elderly people got affected. Maybe by the second pandemic, most of the elderly tried to stay indoors, but the younger individuals used to go out and therefore the chances of them getting infected is much more. So that's another reason why the younger people get uh, affected much more. And a very small proportion of them get complicated. So you may be hearing uh, in media, you know, young people getting affected, getting dying, etc. But the proportion still remains very, very small. I, I don't have a figure, but it could be 0.1 or 0.45%, 0.5%, that's all. It's not that 10 or 20% of young people who get affected become serious. The proportion which gets serious is very, very small. So that's the reason probably why the younger people are getting affected this time. Okay, another question regarding vaccine. Now uh, we are getting the second dose after three months. So how much is the first dose protecting us and what care should we take? So one thing uh, everyone has to realize that the first dose of COVID vaccine does not really confer a very good immunity. So the antibody starts getting formed after 8 to 10 days and starts peaking in about a few week time. 
and after the first dose because you know in a vaccine the inoculum the dose uh, is a small dose and therefore the antibody response is not very robust it is only 15 to 20 days after the second dose that you get a robust antibody response and therefore after the first dose then after the second dose 20 days after that you get a good protection so after the first dose Please bear in mind, don't be very casual about it. You still have to very meticulously follow all the preventive aspects which have been laid down for COVID. That is wearing a mask, using sanitizers, physical isolation, and remaining in a well-ventilated environment, a well-ventilated room, that those precautions you have to take. So now remember, you're going to get a first dose and a three month later, probably you'll get the second dose and 15, 20 days after that, you would get a very good protection. So almost for a period of three and a half months, you are not to be, uh, you know, casual about the kind of protection you are getting and you should take utmost care as far as preventing COVID infection goes. So thank you for listening and stay safe, stay healthy and stay cold free. Thank you and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much.